The Weekly starts now. Hi, welcome to this segment of The Weekly. I have Janet Stevenson with us from Katera. Welcome, Janet. Hello, it's lovely to be here. Well, we're glad you're here. I think you have some great insight into what's going on in the housing market and, and your role in it. Um, and we are very interested in hearing about um, you know, offsite construction and, and really trying to kind of beat that drum a little bit louder uh, for our audience. Um, why don't you start out with telling us a little bit about Katera? I think our audience is familiar with the with the word Katera, the company that it exists, but but not really what you do and your role in our industry. Um, so tell us a little bit about that. Well, thank you. I'm really grateful for your interest and for the invitation to be here. Um, I often say today at Katera because even if people have been introduced to us, uh, we've evolved rapidly over the five years of our existence. And so it's a, it's a very exciting place to be. Uh, and today at Katera, uh, we still have a very solid mission that hasn't changed, and that's to bring technology, whole scale adoption of technology to our products and processes in the construction industry to really make a lot more uh, greater efficiency in the overall delivery of construction. You know, uh, and um, uh, it is based on those well-known stats of our industry as well. We're one of the last craft industries to really benefit and demonstrate the productivity and efficiency gains that other industries have. And so we're really adopting technology that may feel innovative or risky even to our industry. But I always like to think of it as people coming from manufacturing, from automotive, from technology, from oil and gas, looking at our industry going, it's incredibly risky that you're not adopting all of these technologies. So I sit squarely in what we call our platform, building platforms. So I head up the building platform sales. And building platforms are that full turnkey service where we think through how we design a building like a kit of parts and deliver it to you on site. And it's really like sort of a high quality IKEA uh, at the building scale. Okay. Um, we also have very traditional general contracting, a solid network across the U.S. Um, we have a renovations division. And um, also importantly and excitingly is the focus on mass timber, which in many ways is also a new technology for the building. That's great. And, and I want to dive into a little bit on, on when, you, when you talk about mass timber, let's go there just, to, just briefly and kind of tell, because I'm familiar with the term. I think maybe some people call it uh, something different. So maybe dive in it and, and why that's an important component for you. Uh, mass timber we use as an umbrella term to incorporate a lot of the other materials that are within that, that are considered timber products. And so um, the major one, of course, for as a building material that we've chosen to focus on is cross laminated timber or CLT. Um, and we create panels um, that are used as floor plates. Uh, in buildings, and they can be put together with other kinds of mass timber, like glue lamb, uh, but they can also be partnered with structural steel, um, for example, uh, to make an efficient delivery system. And the benefits are amazing. You know, on one level, there's an incredible sustainability story about carbon capture and carbon reduction. Um, there's a beautiful connection with a regional economic development uh, and connection to the rural and urban communities of forestry and building. Um, and there's also a very strong um, conversation about the efficiency of uh, 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 construction going up. Uh, so you need less labor and it can be an extremely fast uh, experience putting a structure up, particularly of the mid to high rise. So we're seeing some exciting construction cost benefits, particularly in the mid to high rise um, side. Uh, when you combine structural steel and CLT, we can really guarantee five to ten percent reduction in costs already. Wow! Um, and okay. a speed, speedy uh, construction schedule, um, and you know, a beautiful environment for the occupant to be in, and the benefits of biophilic connection to wood that can be exposed. Okay, that's that's great. Thank you for that. And and so, I want to kind of get eventually to talking about um, how you look at at the multifamily market uh, in the U.S. But but that's kind of where you guys have found your place. You, like you said, you've diversified into. I, I didn't know you had a remodeling section uh, component. I think that's really intriguing. But um, 
is it fair to say that you kind of started looking at SmartKit as, a, as maybe a single family opportunity and evolved to multifamily? Or was multifamily kind of always where you thought your technologies could get the most traction and, and, and the most value? Yeah, that's a great question. We actually did start more at the multifamily scale and from that have definitely considered uh, how we translate into single family too. Um, but multifamily really provided an opportunity um, to productize and get a lot more waste out of the system. So the single family market, I would say, is almost ahead of the game of multifamily in that they've uh, long since recognized the value of a repeatable design uh, and a very clear understanding of unit costs and, and how that goes together at, a, at scale, maybe not at a, at, at a smaller scale. Um, the multifamily industry, you know, we like to say, how many times do you really have to design a bathroom? Um, and uh, the multifamily industry often deals with urban constraints as well. And so by looking at um, buildings that uh, are in an urban setting, it tends to be a custom building every time. Um, and it's often based on looking at the massing of the building as it relates to the site and the zoning, and then trying to fit things into it. Uh, and so you get sort of custom shapes. And if you start thinking about how do I design this for efficiency of manufacturing and delivery, you start to get an efficiency and a different way of looking at it um, so that you can maybe not productize 100% of the building in an urban setting, um, but you can certainly start getting some predictability uh, around a, a high percentage of that building. And that's valuable right there. It okay. does scale into the suburban uh, side as well, which is really another reason why we started um, with a garden walk-up because it's not constrained by the urban uh, conditions. And so that really does allow us to take a look at a full productized, industrialized solution. Um, talk to me about your prospects for, for urban versus suburban in that regard and, and, and as a solution for affordable housing. I would say the uh, approach to industrialized design and delivery um, really brings benefits in, in all markets. Um, the affordability piece um, is um, especially acute and especially challenging in an urban setting, I'd say. Um, and we're working to create a more continuous improvement approach uh, with clients that have portfolio, sort of programmatic portfolio um, visions of their company's delivery. And so, you know, the first project we'll take a look at to say, this is your program. If we design it in this way, we can achieve this incremental uh, value on this project. Um, but we'll do it in a way that we're capturing data with you every step of the way, so that when we take a look and analyze that data, we'll, t we'll approach project two, you know, with, a, with another incremental change. And so by project four, by project five, we will have you know, a streamlined running program that is transparent to you uh, and we can really start seeing how we can uh, improve every step of the way. Um, with the suburban product, we have a, a, an ability to say, we've already designed it and we've got it down and here's how it works. And so it's a slightly different uh, design approach. Uh, buildings and small parcels that have uh, that are zoned for six, ten stories um, have sort of been left maybe because they don't pencil with current construction technologies like concrete. And this is where we can get that down with mass timber and, and a steel sort of connection. We can really start opening up some of those parcels and bringing density where infrastructure already is, which is sustainable and it uh, creates more affordability for the overall projects as well. So that's, that's one piece of the business. Uh, as we look at opportunities, uh, the different cost of labor, the different distance from manufacturing facilities, uh, the different kind of programs uh, all offer a slightly different uh, opportunity for waste reduction. And so it's not a cookie cutter approach. It's not a one solution fits all. It's uh, an industrialized, uh, sort of a rigorous discipline of taking a look at the tools that we have and applying the right ones. Um, uh, to those opportunities. Talk to me about kind of the, your, what you see and, and your near and long-term prospects for offsite, just generally. Yeah, 
it's so true. It's still a very small percentage of our overall work. Um, and so, you know, to that, it's very exciting when we're joined by anybody. You know, it's, there's a lot of different approaches right now. And, you know, the more people that are in business uh, approaching it in different ways, uh, the more literate we'll all become in these different ways and the more familiar and the less risky we'll find it. So at the moment, the industry is still very much in that place where we all have to join hands and lift each other up. Change is hard. We're human. Change is hard. And uh, this is a very risk averse business with margins that we really want to protect. Um, and so to take a leap into something that's different uh, whilst believing in the margins staying the same or getting better is really difficult unless you have evidence, consistent evidence. And of course, consistent evidence only happens when you've gone through a full building cycle and a full building cycle can be two, three years. So the actual aggregation of data that gives you a confident body of knowledge to demonstrate to people that are risk averse is, you know, takes time to build. What's got you the most excited about the prospects for not just Katera, but for U.S. housing and, and, and the market, you know, going forward? And, and let's try to kind of set aside COVID for a minute and just kind of consider the fact that we have a, you know, at least a hot sales market, if, if kind of a lagging production market. But um, what kind of gets you going? What, what, what's exciting about what you're seeing in our market right now? What, uh, what really excites me is the fact that once you build that connected pipeline of how everything works together, all you have to do then is just change the input and you get a massive impact at scale at the out, at, as an outcome. Um, but the marriage, I think, that uh, the pandemic has created, um, that the pains of climate change are, beca are becoming felt, um, and uh, and the and the the challenges of the cost of the construction industry. You bring all of that together, and it's not just about creating a lot of cookie cutter housing, but it's really about being able to deliver. You know, having developers wanting it, having occupants demanding it, um, having lenders and insurance companies understanding and also asking for it but delivering a quality product that provides a healthy environment for the occupant. And so we're really looking at an outcome that is focused on the health and well-being of, uh, of, of, this, of humanity um, from an economic standpoint on an affordability level, uh, from an environmental standpoint and how it connects to our, you know, the impact on our planet. And I like to think on a psychologically safe sort of level, uh, for the majority of people that are now um, you know, really dealing with uh, some very challenging income equality in our in our in our country.